officer on the motorcycle is conducting a number 11 set and truck to a site where they're to establish station. He's already reconnoitred the position and has decided on the site where the ground station is to be erected. There's a certain amount of cover for the truck under the tree. Put your set down there. Don't forget to dig a slip trench. HQ is at the farm. Over there. Yes, sir. As the cover is incomplete, the first job for the driver is to lay out his camouflage net. The drill which you're going to see shows the most practical way of establishing station with a crew of two operators. First, operator one collects all the gear necessary to erect the aerial and takes it over to the site along with the necessary satchels. He has brought with him the aerial bag and satchels containing feeder, mics and headphones, two drums of remote control cable, battery leads, and spare parts. The next job is to take the aerial bag to the site where the mast is to be erected, and there he unpacks the stay plate, spike, counterpoise, insulator, and six three-foot sections of mast. Remember to keep the spike upright, otherwise when the mast is put on it will be as crooked as the, as the quarter bloke. And don't hit it with a hammer or quite likely you'll crack it. Next the insulator is screwed on and then all is ready to begin driving in the pegs for the stays. First operator one must find out which way the wind is blowing. Taking a half turn away from the wind, in goes the first peg ten paces from the insulator. Meanwhile, the set stays on the air until the last possible moment. Operator 2 is keeping watch. Notice that Operator 1 lines up his pegs by looking straight over the insulator to the peg opposite. Six sections of the mast have to be jointed up. Four are assembled. The stay plate is slipped on. And finally, the two top sections. The mast is laid out pointing into the wind and then the stays are sorted out into their right positions. Each stay is undone and laid out in the direction of the peg which is to hold it. The driver has finished his camouflage. Normally he would be laying out the remote control line but with danger of air attack he starts digging the slit trench where the set will be placed in safety under cover. Operator 1 is connecting the spade of the counterpoise to the insulator. This gives it a firm anchor when he's fanning the leads out. The butt end of the mast is pushed against the spike to steady it when lifting. He can now begin fitting on the remote aerial gear and feeders. He fetches the remote aerial unit and also the remote control unit. The remote aerial equipment consists of the aerial unit, two lengths of feeder, each 15 feet long, and the set coupler. This remote aerial system causes only a very slight reduction in the signal strength. He disconnects the counterpoise from the insulator and connects the aerial lead of the unit in its place. The counterpoise is reconnected And last, the feeder is clamped onto the aerial unit. The two lengths of feeder have to be clamped together. The set coupler is fitted to the end of the feeder. Then the feeder is laid down, ready to be connected onto the set. George, I'm ready when you are. Wait a moment while I get the set out. Operator 2 warns the control station that he will be off the air for about eight minutes and then gets on with dismantling the set. Operator 1 takes out the batteries which will be used as a table on which to reassemble the set. Meanwhile, the slit trench is getting on pretty well. When the two operators have got all the necessary gear out of the truck, Operator 2 starts putting the set together again. First, he takes the twin leads from the satchel and connects them to the two batteries. The other end of the leads goes on to the generator. The ten-point plug connects the generator to the set.
He then plugs in headphones, microphone, and key. And finally, the set coupler on the end of the feeder is connected to the aerial and earth terminals. Then operator two can give a hand in the raising of the mast. Operator one holds the two stays on the windward side fairly slack. If the wind should catch the mast, they'll stop it from toppling over. As soon as the mast is in its socket, operator two holds it as high up as possible while operator one is attending to the stays. When these have been made good, it is safe for operator two to help in making off the other pair. When all four stays are fitted, operator two directs operator one in making the necessary adjustments to bring the mast upright. When the mast is dressed, they get on with the tuning. Adjust the aerial tap, anode tap, down to send, and tune for maximum radiation. The main object of the tuning is that the ammeter on the aerial unit shall read as high as possible. The operators give a signal to each other when the maximum readings have been obtained. When the tuning is finished, operator two listens out for a clear moment in the group's traffic and then begins to re-establish communication. He's through after having been off the air for six minutes, which is record time. All the same, he ought to be wearing his hat. The communications are vital, so keep your hat on even if you're wearing earphones. Operator one knows better than to leave his off. He was at Dunkirk. Meanwhile, the driver continues to dig for victory. The next job is the remote control. Operator two brings a control unit and cable over to the set, and with as little interference to the operator as possible, he connects it up. Line, phones, key. He clamps the first drum of cable to the connector and then loads up with all the gear which he will need. A battery clamping rod, you'll notice, makes a very good spindle on which to roll out his particular barrel. On his way to headquarters, he takes care to lay the cable where it will be safe. It so often happens that a length of cable is ruined when it's been thoughtlessly laid where it can be fouled by transport and particularly by tracked vehicles. That's the end of the first drum of cable and now the second one must be clamped on. Remember, each drum contains 100 yards of cable but allow for at least 10% loss in length when estimating the amount required. Remote control, sir. Put it down there. Yes, sir. The remote control is connected to the cable and clamped up. The microphone and headphones are plugged in and operator two puts a test call through to the set. Hello, can you hear me? Give me a buzz. Okay, it's all right now, sir. All right. All right, I'll tell him. Hey, take the truck back to the car park. Righto. As the station is now fully established, the truck is not required anymore for the time being, so it's taken back to the transport line. On his return journey to the set, operator two improves his line and clears it wherever it may be lying too far out in the path. The slit trench isn't nearly finished yet, so now operator two is back, he must get on with it. No ordinary slit trench can be finished off as quickly as this one will be. It takes about four hours to do the whole job single-handed, so let's get on to where the trench is finished and the set is safely installed. Good cover for the station, but none too soon. During an attack like this, the set and the crew have been able to carry on comparatively easily which amply repays the work they put in on the digging of their trench. Yes, sir. We'll be ready in ten minutes. Shall we order the truck, sir? You have. Thank you, sir. Hey, George, give us a hand. Right on. Instructions have been received for them to move forward to an advanced position, so they begin to dismantle. The truck arrives back, 
the mast comes down and the first thing to go into the truck is the set. When the rest of the gear has been put in by the operator not on duty, they're away. Remember, always back your truck in, ready to start quickly again. Get your set ready in a man pack. Meet me in five minutes. We're going up the hill. Very good, sir. The advance position can only be reached on foot, so the two operators prepare a man pack which consists of the barest working minimum of equipment. Carrying straps are fixed onto both ends of the set. Operator one is fetching the aerial bag and the satchel containing the microphones, headphones and key. Operator two has the HT battery and a satchel containing stationary and battery leads. They carry the set between them and in their outer hands hold the accumulator and the spare valve box. Even with this apparently cumbersome load, they're able to cross the roughest country as the system of loading allows for great freedom of movement. When there are any obstacles like this to pass, one man can steady the set on top whilst the other climbs over. Then he in turn holds the set while the other one gets across. If it's necessary to fall flat in order to take cover, don't drop the set down with a bang. Get down on your knees first before letting go of the set, then fall forward. That's the way. The officer decides that this is a good place for an O-pip. A man pack doesn't hold you down to walking pace. You can move quite fast in the occasion of demand. When they start unloading, each one keeps to himself the gear which concerns him. Don't forget that the lid of the set has legs so that it can be used as a folding table for these occasions. Operator one is dealing with the nine-foot aerial. See the way he's handling the spreaders? He steadies the clamp with the back of his hand against a spreader whilst threading the next one in. He then uses both hands to screw it home and finally he tightens the clamp. The officer keeps careful watch for hostile activity in the zone whilst the two operators are setting up station. Operator one puts up the aerial mast and as soon as it's connected to the set, operator two can begin tuning. If he forgets that hat again, Make sure the air is clear, then down to send, adjust the tappings, and tune up. Now everything should be all right, or should it? Something funny here. What do you make of this, sir? The truth is that the German warships, facing a vastly superior formation of British warships, supported by submarines, aircraft, tanks, and a British fog, withdrew in accordance with a prearranged plan. Get out of the right at the Hamburg station, Brim. That is the end of our news thing.